Burns him. Oh, here we go. All right, guys. So good thing all that was before the recording. So um, guys, our business is built at the kitchen table. Okay. So mastering the KT is what is going to allow you to get results and stay in business while you build the business. Okay. Because none of us, not even me, have a stable business right now without us being present. So you having the ability to stay in business while you build a business is very, very, very important. Yes or no? You need to be able to make money while you're building the thing that's going to make you money while you're not there. So this is arguably one of the most important presentations that you're going to see because you have to learn how to make money. Okay. So remember guys, what we do is right hundred percent of the time. If you've made it through nine weeks of 101 and 201, and you still aren't sure about buy term and invest the difference, you need to figure it out. Like you just got to, you either need to be in or out. Like, and I talked about this in our talk on Saturday. If you got one foot in and one foot out, you might as well be out because you're not going to have just as much success as if you had both feet out. So guys, what we do is right hundred percent of the time. And without us guys, I really do believe um, just from a product standpoint, not even from an opportunity standpoint, from a product standpoint, what we do without us being present in the, in the marketplace, there is little to no hope for the average American family, guys. I really do believe that. And Art Williams says that you just heard it right before this. Crusaders die hard. Like you don't just show up, learn the things that we know and then not do it, right? It just doesn't happen. You can't unlearn the things that you, you're gonna learn here, guys. You need to be assumptive when you are on a kitchen table presentation. People want and need what we do. Every, you, all know, every, you all know people that need to save money they need life insurance. They need to be investing. They need to be doing the things that we teach. Yes or yes. Right. They need to get out of debt. They need all this stuff. Right. It's no, it's not rocket science. They need these things. Right. So guys, they need that roadmap that we're going to put together on that financial needs analysis for them, guys. So the goal of the KT, the, these are the goals. Okay. In, in order. Okay. In the order. Number one, you need to set the financial needs analysis. Without the financial needs analysis, guys, being set, arguably, you're not going to close anything, okay? That financial needs analysis is where you're going to learn all the things that you need to learn about the client. That's where they're going to learn all the things that they need to learn. Number two, we need to close life insurance, right? We want to close life insurance, obviously. So why? So we get paid, right? And number three, we are setting the stage for and maybe even recruiting them, okay? So most important. Set the financial needs analysis. Second most important, close a life insurance, okay? Take the app. Everybody type, take the app in the Zoom chat. You want to take the application, okay? Number three, set the stage for the recruit. What does that mean? Ask the recruiting question. I'll go over that in a second, all right? Moving on. I'm gonna go fast through this, guys, so that way you can ask questions at the end, okay? So just write them down if you got them and ask them at the end. Um, so I feel like I missed, okay, I did. So the process, whoa. The process of a kitchen table appointment, first of all, is figure out how to run Zoom. Second of all is um, you need to form them, okay? So so number one, we are forming and building rapport. Type in the Zoom chat, how long do you think it should take for you to form somebody and build rapport? How long should you build the relationship? How long should that take on the appointment with a prospective client? Five minutes, two to three minutes, five to 10 minutes, two minutes, four to five minutes. Guys, if it's longer than two to three minutes, can I just be honest with you for a second? If it's longer than two to three minutes, the person that you're meeting with is like, okay, what are we doing? Like get to the point, right? Like people can see straight through all the bull crap. If you've ever listened to me run a recruit or a kitchen table, it's quick, right? Why well, I'm getting to the point, but it's funny because I will listen to myself do a KT. I'll listen to a recording. They're laughing. We're joking around, right? We're calling each other by first names. We're having a good time because I, I can connect with somebody. That is a skill, Okay. The book, Skill with People by Les Gobin, I've told you guys, this is another thing I've told you all to do as homework, right? Get and read that tiny little 30 page book. It's literally like this, it's smaller than my phone. Get that book and read it. Learn how to talk to people, right? And it doesn't need to take you forever. Any, if you're, if you're sitting there for like seven minutes, Skill with People, Angela, Skill with People by Les Gobin. Um, so I think that's how you say his last name. Anyway, if, if you're sitting there for 10 minutes talking about the wall color on your paint and how you thought about one time changing the wallpaper from florals to a, a plaid pattern, they don't care, I promise. And they're like, what is the purpose of what we are doing here right now? I, I guarantee it. 
You got to get to the point, but build that relationship. Then number two, what do you know about Primerica, right? Because we're not on the recruiting appointment. We're on the kitchen table. So what do you know about Primerica? We're with a company called Primerica. Have you ever heard of us before, John? No, I haven't. Awesome. If they have, address it right there. Awesome. You have? Great. Tell me everything. What do you know? All right. We'll go over that in just a second. Number three, I have two jobs here today and I'll go over those in a second, right? So you're explaining the two jobs. Number four, you set the financial needs analysis. Okay. Number five, life discussion, life insurance discussion. Okay. And number six, you ask the recruiting questions. If you miss any of these things, you are leaving money on the table. Okay. Just type me in the Zoom chat if you want to leave money on the table. Okay. If you don't want to maximize your time with your client, Seth wants to leave money on the table. Great job, <laughs> Seth. <laughs> Proud of you. <laughs> right. <laughs> not John said, not me. But guys, you don't want to be leaving money on the table. Trust me, guys. And I'm guilty of this too. Me, I, honestly, I'll be honest with you guys. I was listening to Ian go through the 202, th this class, or the 201, week three. I was listening to him go through this exact presentation. I was like, man, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. John, just watch the next month, right? Of me watching this, going back to the master copy and learning what I'm doing wrong. I went back to that. I learned it. I guarantee you I'll recruit clients and we'll have a bit, we'll have an explosion in the next 60 days because of a one hour class going back and listening to that video, right? This is the six steps. If you don't have it taken down the screenshot, you have about four seconds and I'm changing the slide. All right. So form, what does it mean? Hey, guess what? If you've ever recruited somebody or ever been on any call that I've ever run and taught somebody, right? Family, occupation, recreation, motivation. I'm not spending any more time right there. Go watch literally any wake up call for the last two months, okay? Now, I work with a company called Primerica. Have you ever heard of Primerica before? Yes, I have. Awesome. What do you know about it? Most of the time it's like, oh, my cousin once worked with them 17 years ago and blah, blah. That's you like that's usually what you hear. Those of you that have ever heard somebody say yes, normally that's it, right? Sometimes that oh, I have my mutual funds with Primerica. I've got life insurance with them. And sometimes like, oh, Primerica, it's a pyramid thing. Like every rarely, but very, 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 very rarely do you get that. Okay. So I'm going to equip you. Would it be okay with you if I teach you how to address each one of those three things? Would that be all right with you really quick? Cool. Perfect. I think they're on the slides. Uh, nope, they're not. Great. So I thought I made the slides. So we're just going to wing it, John. But okay, cool. Yes, I've heard of Primerica. Awesome. What do you know about it? Well, my uncle's cat did it one time seven years ago. Okay, cool. Well, your uncle's cat is not a human, correct? Cool. So did the cat ever get licensed? No. Great. That's why they didn't make any money because they did not get licensed, right? I'm obviously joking, but oh, my uncle tried it. My best friend tried it. My wife tried it. My husband tried it, whatever. Cool. Did they ever get licensed? No, they did not. Great. How long did they do it for? Well, like two weeks. Cool. Do you know anybody that's built a successful business in two weeks? No, I do not. Okay, great. So is it fair to say that maybe it wasn't Primerica that didn't work? It was possibly the person that didn't get licensed. Is that a fair assumption? Maybe just perhaps. Yeah, Taylor said, Dan, do you really say that? Yes, I say that to people. Like, oh, my brother did it. He didn't make any money. Cool. Is your brother life in is your brother life insurance licensed? No, he is not. Cool. That is a problem. You would agree. Yes. Cool. Would it be all right with you? Right. This is the you have to always get their permission. Would it be all right with you if I show you a little bit about Primerica, who we are and what we do? If they say no, shut it down. Get the heck out of there. Stop wasting your time. Most of the time they're going to say, yeah, that's fine. Or like John, my favorite, my, one of my favorite ways to ask that is, John, I mean, let, if I could take five minutes to show you a little bit about what we do and maybe you find out that they were wrong and didn't know what they were talking about and maybe you make your own educated decision, wouldn't it make sense that you learned the information yourself and made a decision for yourself? Yes, it would. Okay, great. I'm gonna share my screen, right? Okay, cool. Um, next thing, I have my own life insurance. I have my own mutual funds. Awesome. That's great. I'm so happy to hear that. Ha how has your rep been treating you? Oh, my rep's been treating me great. I, okay, cool. Perfect. Well, that's who we're with. And then guys, I just shut down the appointment right there. I'm like, cool. Well, who do you know that John could maybe talk to, um, maybe get a couple referrals for the client right there or for my new agent that I'm talking to, right? Um, now the third, the, the, the second, like 2B, if you will, 2.5 um, is, oh, my agents kind of disappeared. Well, cool. Well, hey, John, I'm sorry to hear uh, your agent hasn't really gotten in touch with you. Unfortunately, just like every other business, people do quit, take other jobs, stuff like that for whatever reason. I don't personally understand why anybody would ever do that, but it does happen. Um, and so honestly, John, like if you need help, 
I'm gonna give you my number so you have it. Um, and, and when was the last time you talked to him? And I'm just gonna kind of get some context and then I'll go from there. Sometimes I'll shut it down right there and I'll just give him my number and I'll say, hey, if you ever need anything, please feel free to call. Who do you know them and get a couple of referrals. If it's been 10 years, I'm gonna give them a brief thing of the presentation because you be you guys would be surprised. So many people in Primerica make the sale and run away. They get no referrals. They don't try to recruit them. They don't do anything. They don't even set up the investments, the wills, the prepaid legals, the mortgages, nothing. They leave so much money on the table. Why? Because we are so fortunate to come out of a hierarchy that has a very, very solid system for you to get every dollar that's available for you on the table. Okay. And you could look, you could hear that statement and be like, oh, that's greedy. No, it's not greedy because they're spending the damn money somewhere else and they're spending more somewhere else. It's selfish of you not to ask them because you're not helping them in the, at the capacity that you guys can. Guys, you have to learn to think differently, right? So guys, uh, prim oh wait, crap. What was the last one? Um, uh, yeah, Primerica is a pyramid scheme, blah, 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 whatever. I've taught you guys how to diffuse that before. But the other thing is like, hey, John, look, like we're not here to talk about you working with us. I don't, I'm, I'm not asking you to work with me. So even if it is a pyramid, I'm not asking you to come be one of the bricks. Like I'm just trying to show you what it is that we do. Wouldn't it make sense? Again, wouldn't it just make sense that you take a look at this thing for three minutes and see if I could save you a couple hundred bucks around the house and maybe get your family properly protected, retire a little bit earlier? Wouldn't it make sense that we just take a look at it real quick and you make a decision for yourself, right? I know I just threw a lot at you guys. This is recorded. It will be up on YouTube, but, but guys, like you, you gotta be able, you have to be a master at overcoming these things because you're going to get hit with these things in the field. When you start doing the recruiting that you should be doing, you're going to have a lot more of the kitchen tables where you're going to run into these things. Right? So John at Primerica, we have two jobs, right? Uh, two jobs. What I'm going to do is our, our job, my, our mission is to help you earn more income, become properly protected, debt-free, or financially independent, right? I'm not going to go over all the stats on the blue page because that changes every year, but you all know, like you've seen this before. We've talked about this for the last two months, right? So you go over the blue things, right? John, our mission is to help people earn more income, become properly protected, debt-free, and financially independent. Cool. Do any of those things sound good to you? Yes, all of them. Great. Guess what they just told me? They're recruitable, right? I believe everybody's recruitable, but they just said like, okay, I'm open to more income. Cool. I'm not there for that though. Why? Because I'm training Seth on a kitchen table. I'm there to talk about the products, but I'm going to recruit him on the back end for Seth. Why? Because I'm there and I'm good at it. Right. I, and I'm speaking for you. You're there. You're good at it. You're the professional. And if you're not, it's your job to become the professional to recruit them on the back end of the kitchen table when they're open to it. Right. So on that appointment, guys, I'm talking to them about the two things. So the job that we do is we help people become educated on how money works. We teach them the concepts, the debt, life insurance, blah, 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 blah. If you're a scripted person, take a freaking screenshot of this. If you're not, it's very, very simple to tell them what we do. I've, I've taught you that for the last two months. But if you're somebody that's like, Dan, I just need you to write this all out so I can copy it exactly. There it is. Copy that exactly. That is straight from prop. It's, exact, it's literally his presentation. Okay. You got five seconds. Moving on. Awesome. And we do this. Ready, guys? Here's the thing. We do this by taking our clients through, a, and I'm not going to go exactly off of this, but watch, read it, and then listen to what I'm saying. So, John, we do this by helping clients walk through what's called a financial needs analysis. Financial needs analysis, kind of like a GPS, right, John? If I gave you my address and said, come down to Florida, bring all your family, it's going to be amazing, right? It's a fully inclusive trip. We're going to go to Disney, Bush Gardens, the beach, all of that. I'm paying for everything. All you got to do is hop in the car and get here. John, what are you going to do with my address to get here for the first time? And what's he going to say, guys, every time? I'm going to put it in my GPS, right? Okay, cool. So, John, you would agree that having a, a plan is better than not having a plan, yes? Awesome. So, John, outside of yourself, who currently handles your financial planning, right? Very similarly added here is you can have a written game plan for doing your finances, or do you have a written game plan, or are you just managing it yourself? I personally like, it's an easier sentence, right? Who currently handles your, you would agree that having a plan is better than not having a plan. Yes? Yes, I would. Cool. Outside of yourself, who currently handles your financial planning? Guess what everyone says? Put in the Zoom chat. Nobody or my job. No one. Great. You know what's crazy here, guys? People are literally telling you that nobody has, they, no one handles their plan. And then what are they doing, Caleb? They're then telling you that they don't have a plan. Or no, sorry. They're, I said that backwards. They're agreeing with you that they need a plan. And then they're telling you they don't have one. 
Guys, do you understand that those two questions are there on purpose for you to get them to tell you that they would be dumb not to have a plan and then them to tell you that they don't have a plan. Why? So you can book an appointment to set up the plan. If you are not asking those two questions on your kitchen table appointment, it is no wonder why you're not closing $10,000 in premium. Because guys, like if you, if you are setting the financial needs analysis, you are closing life insurance 70 plus percent of the time. It might not always be on that appointment, but it is coming soon, right? Guys, so we have to set this up. And so look, there's the questions. If you could have a plan, that would be better than not having a plan. Would you agree? Right? Guys, this, this is Proc's exact presentation. This is Ian Prockner's. This is the, pre Angie, this is the presentation that he taught his entire hierarchy to push from 400,000 to a million in 12 months. That's it. Guys, don't reinvent the freaking wheel. Don't chase people around getting them to buy life insurance. Chase people around setting up financial needs analysis. Why? Because everything else comes from that, right? So uh, I'm going to set up a time to come back. We're going to go through the financial needs analysis. The average financial planner charges about $1,000 to do this plan and make specific recommendations. We're going to do it at a price that nobody ever is complaining to me about. We're going to do it for free. All right. And so here's the things I'm looking for, right? And these are the things that I haven't been doing. When I, I'll be honest, when I came back to this today, I was like, man, I'm leaving so much on the table, right? So here's the commitments. Number one, when I come back, if you can look me look at me across this Zoom call, right? And you can say, hey, Dan, this is awesome. I'm glad that we did this. I'm gonna ask you if you'd be willing to give me five to 10 referrals. This is how I grow my business. So people that are married, have kids, they, they have a job, they own their house that are gonna benefit from this. If you think that they would benefit from the same information, would that be okay with you? What am I doing right there, Tammy? I'm getting the okay for them to, for me to ask them for referrals when I come back together, right? I'm telling them I'm going to ask you for referrals, okay? Awesome. So, and when I come back, if you say, Dan, I already knew all this stuff. You're super pushy. Your breath smells bad. I hate your shirt. Your hair looks stupid. Your beard's ugly and your glasses have a scratch in them. I hate you. I won't ask you for any referrals. Is that fair? Yeah, cool. I'm getting the commitment that they're going to give me referrals when we get back together. Why? Because I've never, Caleb, I've never met with somebody and, and had them not tell me I got value here. Never. And if your breath stinks through Zoom, you got bigger problems. Let's just, yes or no. Like if your breath stinks on Zoom, like we got we to gotta call the dentist because there's something going on there. So guys, I'm getting the commitment. The second thing, John, that I'm going to ask you for is that when I come back with a plan and if it helps you pay off your debt faster, it protects your family better. It saves you more money, more efficiently than you're currently saving right now. And it costs you the same or less than what you're currently doing. I'm going to ask you to move forward with those improvements that we made. Obviously, if we could put you in a better position, it would make sense for you to switch everything over, correct? Cool. I would never ask you to do something that doesn't make sense for you, but I just need to make sure that if we're going to do this, and if it does make sense that you're going to switch. Why am I asking that question? Because Jenna, some people are working with their brother and their brother's been screwing them over for 30 years and we are going to expose that and they're not going to move. Why? Because it's their brother. They're like, oh, it's my uncle. He really cares about me. Your, your uncle's been selling your whole life for 30 years and getting you to re-up it every five years. Why? Because he's making money off of it. Guys, we're helping people understand this, right? We're teaching them this, guys. You're going to set the financial needs analysis for three to seven days away. I My favorite way to set up the financial needs analysis is like, John, we're going to get back together, set up a financial needs analysis. Sound good? Yes, it does. Awesome. What day of the week is usually good for you? Is this exact same day and time next week usually available? Is that okay for you? Yes, it is. Great. I will see you at this exact same time next week on the exact same Zoom link. And then what I do is I go into my calendar and I just reschedule the appointment for a week out. I just take the same appointment and change the date. That's it. Okay. Super simple. Post closing by telling them this. I think the script is right here. Uh... There is not. Okay. So one of the ways that you guys can post close this, and I love that Ian does this. He he tells people, so, hey, Jenna, I'm super excited to meet back up with you and Dustin, talk to your finances, make sure we got everything going in the right direction. Jenna, people are going to tell you, people might tell you if you go tell them what you're doing, that you don't need a financial planner, you're all set, you got your work benefits and everything like that. And those people around you most likely are not retired. Is that a fair assumption? Yes, it is. Awesome. Okay. So wouldn't it make sense that we get back together and we keep this appointment seven days from now, just to make sure that you're in a better position. If there's a chance, Jenna, that I could help you retire 
five years earlier, save a little bit of money on taxes, make sure you're properly protected, set your kids up for success long-term. Wouldn't it make sense you gave me 15 minutes next week and we compare everything? Awesome, cool. I'll see you next week at seven. And then I move on, right? Next thing. Um, already talked about that one. Sorry, I got some doubles on here, kind of on purpose, but not really. I'm going quick through this. Um, if we're talking, okay, no, I'm not going to go through that. So all right, a couple of things I'm going to ask, Jenna, is that next week when we get together, um, you're going to bring any statements that you have for your current and or old 401ks, IRAs, stuff like that. Jenna, do you currently have any investment accounts that you're not currently contributing to that are laying out there or things that you're currently doing? Yes, you do. Awesome. Cool. Can you please bring those? next week can you get those statements go online download those statements and grab them and bring them to our appointment next week or could you email me at my primary email address yeah. yes you can okay great thank you so much super excited for that second thing um is do you have any life insurance outside of work or or outside of your job who currently handles your life insurance nobody oh my gosh you don't and then it's the why primary at the kt right you got the five things who currently handles your life insurance? Nobody. Great. And then you go through the thing. My job. Great. I have permanent life insurance. Awesome. I have no life insurance. Cool. Whatever, right? I have it through my job. Whatever it is, right? Y'all have done your homework and watched Why Prime America at the KT. If you haven't, you're about three months behind of me telling you almost every day that you need to watch that video. So probably figure it out. Um, so you go over the Why Prime America at the KT, right? Then I move into this, right? So I'll follow the life insurance presentation. Why Prime America? You're going to take the application on the appointment everybody type on the appointment you are taking a life app on every dad gum appointment that you go on period always every time if they're open to it you're taking it right why because you can take it as what's called cash on delivery which requires no money up front from the client also you hitting the submit button on the policy does not make them pay Okay, so you're going to tell the client, hey, we're just going to apply really quick. We're going to see what it comes back at. That's it. Oh, I can't pay for it. Great. I'm not asking you to pay for it right now. And then you get into the quote process, right? You go through everything. And then guys, and we're going to talk about that process next week. So don't be like, Dan, how do I do that? That is next week. So come back next week for that. But you're going to pick up the investment statements and you're going to bring them to your trainer or your investment licensed person. That is me or Cassie period. Not yourself. You're not going to take it and look at it. You're not going to take it and like sit on it in your email. You're going to get the investment statement from the client. How do you do that? Great question. John, awesome. I know you said you have a 401k. Can you log into your benefit plan real quick? You don't got to share your screen, but can you just log into that really quick? Awesome. Great. Go ahead and go to your statements. Do you see the little button that says download? Go ahead and click the download button. Cool. Drag that file, put it in your email and send it to me really quick. Why are you, why am I going through all this trouble right now, guys? Why? Because I got the commitment from the client already that they're going to move forward. Once I put them in a better position, you are always able to put them in a better position. Unless they're already with Primerica guys, you're going to be able to put them in a better position. Guys, if you don't believe that, like you need to actually look at this business and what we do. It's freaking math. Math is very simple. It is always better for them to be working with us. Guys, so you got to get the statements and give them to your trainer, okay? It's very, very important. It also gives them, back up real quick. It also gives that client a reason to come back, right? Why? Because you did all this work. Now, do they always show up? Unfortunately, no. But normally, if you do the work and you follow up with them a couple of days in it, like, hey, I'm almost on your financial needs analysis, super excited to meet with you. And then two or three days later, that you're like, hey, I'm so excited to meet with you tomorrow, Jenna. I just got everything done. I think you're going to be super impressed with what we got. Can't wait to meet with you, right? And then on that text or on that call, you tell them, Jenna, don't forget, we're going to go through all this stuff. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. I need you to make sure you have those names and numbers for the referrals because I'm going to blow your mind. You're going to, you're going to be able to retire a few years earlier. We're going to save you a hundred bucks around the house. Make sure you have those referrals ready so that we can do this for you, okay? And then I tie her down over and over and over again to getting on the appointment, right? So you're going to ask the recruiting questions after that. The last thing you're doing. So John, I'm so excited to get back together with you next week. Um, that's going to be amazing. It's going to be super cool. I can't wait to show you everything. And so John, I'd be remiss not to at least ask you this, right? But on a scale of one to 10, one being I hate helping people and I don't like making extra money at all. Number 10 being if, if you could show me how to make an extra one to $2,000 a month working a few hours a week, helping people doing what I just did. Where would your interest be based on that? Based on this initial meeting right here. If it's a nine or a 10, I'm recruiting you right there. 
I might have to answer a couple of questions. Okay, you're gonna have to get licensed, 124, whatever, blah, blah, blah. If it's eight or lower, an eight, I might ask another, maybe a clarifying question, right? But if it's a seven or lower, guys, and really if it, if it's a five or lower, hey, cool, John, thanks, I appreciate it, no worries. If it's a seven or eight, maybe even a six, I might ask a couple, just maybe a clarifying question or two, and you'll know what to ask when you're on the appointment. Like, okay, cool, if you had a little extra money, cool. Well, what's, what, what's maybe your questions there, right? Basic things like that. But if it's less than a five, don't talk about recruiting. Don't even talk about it at the FNA, right? Like you're, you're going to close business with them. And then guess what, John, you're going to show, Hey, you know, if we could make an extra 500 bucks, would you be open to that? Like why? Cause on the FNA, guess what you're going to do? Show them the shortfall of their retirement and you recruit to the shortfall. You don't recruit to Primerica. You recruit to the shortfall. John, you just got to make an extra 400 bucks a month. And you're gonna be able to retire. All right. Your current job, are you gonna be able to get an extra 400 bucks a month? No. Great. If I could show you how to do that in an hour a week or two hours a week, would you be open to it? Yes, cool. Is everybody going to make that much money? No, why? People don't do what they're supposed to do most of the time. But some people will, right? And so those people will make money. And and guys, that's all I got for the presentation. But I want to just say on this really quick, if you are not where you want to be right now, if you're not making the money that you want to be, I blitzed through that. I know I did. But that that right there is the skeleton of the kitchen table, right? That is not the presentation, obviously. I was teaching you the concept of the presentation. I understand that. That was not the exact presentation. But but guys, like the presentation is literally that simple. It's those six con those six key concepts at the beginning. Now that you know the six concepts and you've seen this, once this is up on YouTube tomorrow, probably Tuesday, go back, watch it again. Honestly, if you want to go watch, search Ian Pruckner 201 week three and watch him do it. Right, guys, the only reason I'm recording these is, is for our team. I want to put I want our team to hear me do it. But Ian's the master copy, dude. It's on YouTube. Go freaking watch the thing and learn this. Guys, you're you it's it's up to you to get better. It's not up to anybody else to get better for you. You understand that? Like nobody's gonna get better for you. Nobody's coming to rescue you. You have to rescue you. You gotta get better for you. Fair enough. Cool. We good. Was that helpful? Did you guys get value out of that? I know that was super fast and I probably blitzed through a lot of stuff. If you have a question, I will give you, can can one of you jump over to the main room really quick and just like type in the Zoom chat, tell Josh, or if you need to unmute yourself really quick, tell Josh, he's got five minutes, okay? I will take five minutes of your questions. So if, um, let's see, I'm gonna pick on, okay, someone just left. I don't know who did that, but whoever did, thank you. You can't hear me, but thank you. Um, all right, so Tammy, what's your question? Okay, so, excuse me. Okay, so you're talking about the investment. So, um, for military, um, our investment is a, is called a TP, but I don't really know like the interest rate on that. So, how would somebody be able to move that? Because I do have a client who has that, yep. and we don't know how to move that. So, if they are active, it's similar to a four hundred one k in a sense of we don't necessarily want to touch it, right? Now, that that's a whole nother. I can train you on TSP if you really want me to, but. You are an investment license. So this is the easiest way for you to get out of that. But like, I have a TSP. I'm all set with the military. Be like, you know what, Tammy, I, I, I love that you have a TSP. That's awesome. You got something going on already. I would really encourage you to meet with my financial, my, like our financial advisor, the guy that does the investments. They'll be able to walk you through that and show you some ways that you can keep your TSP and maximize your return on that. Right. And we're just, we're just, cause you're not licensed. So you can't even talk about, even if you, even if, even if you knew it legally, you can't talk about it. Like you could say, oh, that's great. But you have that. Awesome. Cool. You could explain what it is. But the second you start doing any sort of selling whatsoever, you can't. You are, you're breaking the law. You're not allowed to do that. So just, just, hey, awesome. That's great. I love that you have that. Just send over a statement. We'll see what we can do. Hey, and this, what's, what's Izzy always say? There's a 99.999% chance that we could save you a little bit of money. Would it be worth you looking at it? If we can't and you're in the best spot, great. Just deflect to your investment advisor, right? Which is me. So, def, def, or Cassie, deflect to us and let us handle it. You send me a statement, I will get it to somebody. I don't know what to do with it. I'll be honest with you. I'll get to somebody that does, and then I'll know what to do with it the next time. And I'll be able to explain it to them. Why? Because I will go learn it and then come back and teach somebody it. That's how you learn stuff. You teach it, right? You you learn faster when you teach. John, what's up? Hey, so 
just to clarify what you touched on a minute ago, as far as the presentation, would you say that's basically part of step five, the life insurance discussion? Yes. No, okay. no. The presentation is, uh, hang on, let me pull it up. I'm not going to share. I'm looking at process of the KT basically. Yep. I'm going backwards. Sorry. Um, okay. So the, the process of the KT is, um, uh, so the blue page happens at, what do you know about Primerica? So have you ever heard of Primerica before? We're Forbes, yep. blah, 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 all that first section. The two jobs is the middle section. The setting the financial needs analysis is the last section. Okay. Right. So here, I'll share my screen really quick. And I will give you the 10 second version of each one of these sections. Ready? So, oh, I almost left the freaking breakout room. I did that the other day. I did that the other day on an orientation. I literally tried to stop sharing my screen. I straight ended the Zoom call in the, in the middle of an orientation. Um, but so where's the blue page? There it is. Okay, so this top section right here, 2.7 million clients, 5.7, blah, blah, blah. That's the Primerica, like who is Primerica? Our question, the two are two things we do. We help people make money. We help people save money, protect their family, et cetera. And then how we do what we do is we set the financial need. We provide a financial needs analysis, right? It's right there. So that's the set of the FNA right there. And then you use the GPS. Well, then you use like the GPS situation uh, and explanation right there. All right. Um, other questions. Thank you, John. That was a good question. Uh, thank you for asking that. Um, what other questions y'all got? Anybody at all? I guess just to clarify it real quick, uh, are, are you are you saying that we don't really worry about uh, actually doing any of the presentation? All that goes into the F and A effectively, as far as like Rule seventy two and decreasing. No, no. Um, this is why it's really important for you to know the color personalities or the star system of the people you're meeting with. Because if you get on a call and I got somebody that's like a green or a T, a technical person. I'm going to go through the rule 72. I'm going to talk, like I'll, I will talk them through that. Like, like John, you're very green. You're a very technical person. I would go through that with you because you would see value in that. If you try to give me that presentation, I would just, I would fall asleep. I would be like, I don't care. Like this, like I got it. You show me the graph. I'm like 12%, 3%, 12% is better. I get it. Like, I don't need to know why, you know what I mean? Like, but the people that need to know why, like that you need to know their personality types. You need to know how to, like there's a book, I don't know what it's called. It's the four color personalities for MLMs. The four okay. color personalities for MLMs. You should all get the book. It's unaudible. It's also a paper book. Read it slash listen to it a lot because it's going to teach you how to connect to them. If, if I'm red, I'm a, I'm red through and through. I'm very A, action-oriented type of person. Yeah, it's by um, Tom Schrader, I think is how you say it. Um, but I, so me personally, like I'm red, but I can connect to anyone. I just got to know their color personality. And you're not going to be able to get everyone. Like a, a lot of people are like a mixture of two or three. It is what it is. Like pick the best one, go with your best bet. And then the more you talk to them, the more clear it's going to be what they are. So just, just, know, but you need to know what, you need to know what your options are. Cause if you picked purple, you're, there's no purple, you're wrong. Right. So you got to know the colors, like you got to know the type of people. So Awesome guys. Well, I'm going to, um, I'm going to end this.